And now to health matters, the Minister of Health, Osage Haniri, on Monday at the Presidential Task Force COVID-19 briefing in Abuja, revealed that the Ministry of Finance has released 10 billion naira to support domestic vaccine production. He noted that Nigeria is exploring the option of local production of the vaccines in the country. To get further perspective on the discuss, as a vice chancellor of Chrisland University at Berkuta and a professor of pharmaceutical chemistry and pharmacokinetics, Chinedum Babalola, she joins us live from Berkuta, the Ogun State Capital. Thank you very much for joining us live on the news at this time. Now, we're talking matters of COVID-19, and for some time, we're talking about the local productions of COVID-19 vaccines. Do you think Nigeria is ready for this local production? Oh, good evening, listeners. With a little bit of patience, I think so. Maybe in a matter of months. And this is because... May and Baker PLC has signed an, a memorandum of understanding with the federal government to float a joint venture called BioVaccine Nigerian Limited, located in Yaba, Lagos, uh, to be able to produce vaccines in Nigeria, including COVID-19 vaccine. This agreement was signed in November 2020. And I know that um, with a little bit of patience, they should start production. Also, the DG of NAVDAC has said that they are putting uh, things in place to ensure that Nigeria manufactures um, vaccines, COVID-19 okay. vaccines. So I believe so. All right, so you say patience, uh, but the federal government says it has look, allocated 5.84 billion naira in the 2021 budget to key agencies saddled with pharmaceutical research and vaccines development. Do you think this will help address or facilitate the deficit in that sector? I think so, because we didn't have that before. So moving from nearly zero to that amount of money should be able to do something, especially if used appropriately. And uh, we applaud the federal government for doing that because research and development are key with respect to uh, vaccine production. So even if it is not enough to do everything we want to do, but it is a good starting point, And I think this time we should applaud them. So as, as long as it is plowed in the right direction, we should, what I call, let's not spread too far, but we can focus and dig deeper, and so we can make impact. If there are um, already low-hanging fruits, we should go to such places and support them with this kind of money. All right, Nigeria is set to receive, according to reports that we have, about 100,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccines in the days ahead. Do you feel Nigeria is well prepared for effective use and distribution of the vaccines? Well, from what we have read so far, the government has identified um, some set of beneficiaries with this uh, number of vaccines, especially those in the vulnerable group, those in front line, those that are older, those in the force and all that, which is very good. Um, with respect to distribution, we must maintain cold chain. I've also read uh, people or companies that are trying to make uh, what I call um, vacuum flask or containers that will maintain cold chain. If the cold chain is not maintained, then the vaccines will not be viable. And that's why quality, quality, quality is so important. And I know that uh, NAVDAC will be looking into some of those things. We have to look at the, what, the, what the quality is at the, at, the, at the stage of the end user. So distribution is very important and the cold chain must be maintained. Left for me, and I know now that we do that, we should continue to look at the quality of the vaccines on arrival and at the point of um, delivery to patients. So the logistics is very important. You cannot just come and dump one 
thousand or hundred thousand vaccines and then they expire within a few days. We must make sure that we are ready to receive them and we are ready to maintain the cold chain. Okay, what would you say concerning the fears of some Nigerians regarding this um, distribution of these vaccines coming? A lot of people have had fears, or rather, had fears rather with this uh, coming of the COVID-19 vaccines. Uh, you mean fears about what, precisely? Fears about its potency, its quality. Oh, yes, everybody is concerned uh, about that. I'm also concerned about that. And that's why I keep saying that uh, we must look at the facilities we have. We must not take more than we can bite. If we can take them in bits, that is all well and good. So we must, uh, uh, I have concerns about it. So the only way to remove the concern is to be as transparent as possible. All the people that are involved should be really, really transparent and we should continue to check, uh, carry out our quality control, make sure that quality assurance systems are set up, SOPs are set up, so that at the end of the day, we are not getting something that is not viable. So they have every reason to be concerned. I'm All also right. concerned. But if we are transparent that these are the things that have been put in place, then we won't be okay. concerned anymore. Uh, when I had to do the COVID tests, at some point, they, 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 they had all the cold chain facilities when they take the samples. And I was confident that whatever sample they are taking will be, uh, will be the results will be valid enough. All so right. Thank you so much. But what we have, that's fine. Thank you so much. Well, we rely on government to do its best for the citizenry. Thank you for joining us on the news. Thank you very much. That was the Vice Chancellor of Christland University, Abelkuta, and the Professor of Pharmaceutical Chemistry and Pharmacokinetics, Chinedum Babalola.